Hello and welcome everyone to the session on case based scenarios in medicine part 10. My name is Dr. Janvi. I am the anesthesia educator on Unacademy. I hope all of you are able to see me and hear me well. We have been having this series this entire month, especially for those who are preparing for NEET PG. Alright, I can see that the streaming is absolutely fine and we can go ahead with today's class. So welcome to this class on Unacademy. I am a gold medalist in anesthesiology and this is the telegram channel where I post the links to all of my classes. This is the telegram channel Let's Crack Neat PG. Make sure to join it so that you get the links to all the classes. So today we have one class right now at 6 p.m. and the next class is at 8 p.m. Here we are going to be discussing various x-rays in the form of a quiz for your exam. All right. And tomorrow also we'll be having a class in the morning. Now the NEET PG All India mock test is being conducted by an academy on 26th of February and at 9 a.m. It's a free test for all of you all. You all can attend it and you all can also test your preparation and your ranking amongst your peers. And if you would like to buy the plus subscription on an academy, it can give you access to live and recorded classes. You can learn from India's top educators. You can compete in live tests and quizzes and you can access our question bank with 25,000 plus questions. And there is something very exciting. Those who buy one year subscription now, one year plus subscription, you're getting free notes for this entire month. All right. So you will get free notes available in and you can use those notes for your preparation. The iconic subscription is a partnership between Unacademy and Prep Ladder, which will help you get the best of both. So you get the recorded lectures of Prep Ladder along with the live lectures of Unacademy. These are our FMG toppers. These are the educator curated individual subject test series for medicine, gynec, orthopedic, surgery, biochemistry, all of them. And if you would like to try the Unacademy platform. We even have the special classes online. So these special classes will help you get PDF lecture notes. You can get polls. You can get raise a hand option in which you can ask live questions to your educator. These are the batches that are going on right now. The NEET PG 2022 all educator revision batch target next 2023 subject wise batch and the focus FMG batch comprehensive as well as the December batch. And if you would like to buy the plus subscription, you can use my code Dr. Janvi Live and this will help you get an extra discount on your subscription. So with that, let's begin with our class for today. This is the first question that we have during anesthesia post ending viva. The consultant asked the student what inhalational agent is filled in this vaporizer. What is your answer? Sevoflurane, halofluorine, halothin, isofluorine or desflurane. So you guys can answer in the chat box. I will be able to see your answers in the chat box. All right. So Nimesh is saying that there is halothane in this vaporizer. Any other answers do we have or is everyone agreeing with Nimesh? There was a small plastic piece. I thought that is giving me that silvery picture on my face, but that doesn't seem to be the problem. All right. So absolutely correct. Nimesh, your answer is right. This is a halothane vaporizer. Uh, you have to identify the vaporizers as per the color on the top of the vaporizer. Okay. So halothane is red in color. So can anyone tell me what is the color of sevoflurane, isoflurane and desflurane vaporizer? You need to remember all of these for your exam because they can ask you any of them, especially SIVO and ISO because they are more commonly used. Anyone? What is SIVO fluorine vaporizer color? Very good Nimesh. So SIVO fluorine is yellow. What about ISO fluorine? ISO fluorine is purple in color and desflurane is desflurane. There's a very nice way to remember. You can remember desflurane say the word desi. Desi, desi jersey is blue in color, correct? The Indian jersey is blue in color, Indian cricket jersey. So the desflurane vaporizer is blue in color. Now, since we are discussing the color of the vaporizers, we will also quickly discuss the MAC of these agents. So can anyone tell me what is the MAC of these individual agents? 
what is the mac of sevo mac of halo mac of iso and mac of des all right we have only nimesh answering why guys i want all of you all to start answering remember if you make mistakes over here you won't make mistakes in the exam बताओ जल्दी ओके एटलीस्ट ऑल कैन टेल मी विच ऑफ दीज फोर एजेंट्स हैज द लीस्ट मैक मैक इज नथिंग बट मिनिमम एलवियोलर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन रिक्वायर टू प्रोड्यूस एंड कॉन्शियसनेस इन द पेशेंट निमेश डू यू नो द मैक ऑफ एनी ऑफ दीज एजेंट्स All right. So let me tell you, Mac of halothene is the least out of all of them, and it is 0.75. After that, next we have Mac of isofluorine, and that is 1.4. Then we have Mac of sevofluorine, and that is 2. And then we have Mac of desfluorine, and that is Mac 6. Okay. So these are the Mac of all the anesthetic agents. Now, how to remember the Mac of the anesthetic agents? I have taken on YouTube one mnemonic video for the same. so just put my name janvi and write mac and write mnemonic okay so you will be able to find the mnemonic video which gives you the mac of all the anesthetic agents all right so that is one easy way to remember of course i'm not going to tell you over here otherwise we'll never finish this class today but you guys can go and watch it on youtube all right okay so now can you guys identify vaporizer number 1 vaporizer number 2 and vaporizer number 3 for me Identify vaporizer number one, two, and three for me, quickly. very good so the blue one the first one is nothing but desfluorine the second one is purple it is isofluorine and the third one is yellow and that is co fluorine excellent all right let's go on to our next question which of these nail conditions are seen in lichen planus so i'm giving you four options a b c and d and you have to tell me which of these nail conditions are seen in lichen planus along with that you also have to identify individually all four of these nail conditions for me Okay, so Nimesh is saying answer is C. Nan, P, K, and Kartik are also saying C. Absolutely correct. That is correct. So in lichen planus, the condition that you see is C. So can you guys tell me what is the condition that you see in C? Yogesh is also saying the same. Very good. So what is A? What is B? What is C? What is D, guys? What are all four of them? In A, you are seeing these white lines. What are these white lines called as? And in which condition do you see them? Yes, Nimesh. Nimesh, you are right about C. C is nothing but a wing-shaped protrusion that you can see, and it is called as pterygium. Correct. What about A, B, and D? In which conditions do we see them? All right. So A is the white lines that you see. what are these lines called as they are called as mees lines very good nimesh and mees lines are seen in which condition in what poisoning they are seen in arsenic poisoning okay any idea about b and d
एनी वन एनी आइडिया अबाउट बी एंड डी येस वेरी गुड योगेश सो डी यू कैन सी पिटिंग ऑफ नेल्स ओके सो दी पिटिंग ऑफ नेल्स आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज ऑयल ड्रॉप नेल्स एंड दे आर बोथ सीन इन केस ऑफ सोरियासिस वेरी गुड निमेश सो वॉट यू सी इन बी इज नथिंग बट डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द नेल्स बाय फंगल इन्फेक्शन ओके एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड एज टीनिया अंगियम दिस इज नेल इन्फेक्शन कॉज बाय फंगस एंड दैट इज कॉजिंग द डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द नेल ओके सो यू हैव मीज लाइन सीन इन आर्सेनिक पॉइजनिंग टीनिया अंगियम टेरिजियम सीन इन लाइकन प्लानस एंड पिटिंग ऑफ द नेल्स सीन इन सोरियासिस ओके मूविंग ऑन टू आर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन A 24-year-old patient is posted for Coley's fracture repair. The anesthetist wants to give a supraclavicular block. What instrument can she use for the same? So I'm giving you four instruments over here: A, B, C, D. You have to identify for me which instrument can be used for giving supraclavicular block. Nimesh is saying A. Any other answers? All right. Very good, Manoj. absolutely correctly identified so option a is the correct answer and that is a peripheral nerve locator okay so what does a peripheral nerve locator do so suppose this is my neck and from my neck all of you all know that there is a brachial plexus that is going over here okay it goes from here into the axilla and then into the hand and it supplies the hand okay so what does a peripheral nerve locator do i basically put a needle from here okay the needle is attached and then i give an electrical stimulus so when i give an electrical stimulus these nerves that are there of the brachial plexus they get stimulated so when they get stimulated you get twitching of the hand and you know that you have reached the brachial plexus now the minute you reach the brachial plexus what i do is when i get the twitching of the hand i give local anesthetic drug to the patient and when i give local anesthetic drug all along the brachial plexus my brachial plexus gets completely numb so the entire hand will become numb you have motor loss as well as sensory loss so you will not be moving the hand at all and the surgery can be carried out just by giving one injection in the neck okay so that is called as regional anesthesia so to locate the nerves we use something which is called as the peripheral nerve locator which you can see in option a okay so the answer is option a now what is option b c and d anyone any idea what is option b c and d since we have discussed option a d to you all must have seen in the hospitals yes good manoj so option b is a train of four monitor or it is also called as peripheral nerve stimulator okay so how is a peripheral nerve stimulator different from a peripheral nerve locator okay locator will help you to locate nerves stimulator will check whether the action of the muscle paralysis agents your neuromuscular blocking agent is over or not okay it is also called as the top monitor all right what is c what is d any idea what is c and d all right c is basically many electrodes attached to the back of the patient and you give pain relief so c is called as tens monitor tens is nothing but transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation okay transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation so you will stimulate the nerves through the skin you attach these pads just like we attach defibrillator pads just like that you attach these electrodes to the skin to the back of the patient specifically and you stimulate the nerve so that the pain reduces okay and then d is nothing but a ct machine that's why i expected most of you all will understand d but none of you all have identified it correctly okay so for giving any kind of regional anesthesia block you will be using a peripheral nerve locator for checking whether action of the neuromuscular blocking agent is gone or no we will use a top monitor tens is for pain relief so it's for chronic pain and d is nothing but ct machine all right okay 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ड्यूरिंग द प्रोसीजर द पेशेंट सडनली स्टार्ट बिकमिंग अनकोऑपरेटिव एंड स्टार्ट गेटिंग सीजर्स शी ऑल्सो हैज ब्राइडी कार्डिया एंड हाइपो टेंशन वॉट इज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग ओवर यूर यू आर गिविंग अ रीजनल एनेस्थीजिया सुप्राक्लाविकुलर ब्लॉक विद लोकल एनेस्थेटिक टू द पेशेंट एंड ड्यूरिंग द प्रोसीजर द पेशेंट स्टार्ट बिकमिंग अनकोऑपरेटिव स्टार्ट गेटिंग सीजर्स स्टार्ट गेटिंग ब्राइडी कार्डिया स्टार्ट गेटिंग हाइपो टेंशन सो वॉट विल योर ट्रीटमेंट बी फॉर दिस मिडाजोलम एड्रेनाल इन प्रोपोफॉल और इंट्रालिपिड और मनोज सिंह इंट्रालिपिड एनी अदर आंसर्स Nimesh is also saying D intralipid. Okay, what do you think has happened over here? What is the condition that we are talking about? Yogesh is also saying the same. You guys are right, but what is the condition that we are talking about? All right. So I told you, you are giving a regional anesthesia block to the patient. So the drug that we are giving over here is nothing but local anesthetic. Correct. Now, if there is local anesthetic systemic toxicity, how do you get toxicity of the drug? Either instead of giving the drug around the nerves, you give it inside the blood vessel. So that is intravascular injection. This is an accidental intravascular injection. Okay. Or the second thing that is possible is. instead of this you overdose the patient you don't correctly calculate the dose of the patient and you overdose and give it to him okay so that would be causing last or local anesthetic systemic toxicity okay so what is the drug of choice in this case the drug of choice in this case is nothing but 20% intralipid please remember the concentration of intralipid that you have to use so what happens when you have excessive local anesthetic it will go to your heart it will act on your sa node and it will cause fall in heart rate and it will cause reduced conduction of the rate okay second thing that it does is other than the heart it also acts on your brain and it will initially cause seizures and later lead to coma and overall the entire thing can lead to death of the patient so how do you prevent the death of the patient in case of local anesthetic systemic toxicity you give this this is the antidote 20% intralipid it will go and absorb all the excessive local anesthetic that is there in the body and it will save the patient all right okay moving on to our next question a child comes to the emergency room with a rash after his parents took him to a farm for a holiday identify the disorder in this case atopic dermatitis eczema sle or photosensitivity i'm going to add something to this question okay because the question is incomplete mother also gives history of similar rash as a child now you identify what is the answer so afsha is saying it is photosensitivity manoj is saying atopic dermatitis anishi is also saying atopic dermatitis and afsha has retracted her answer now Tarakanta is also saying A. Okay, so can you guys tell me why are you all thinking of A? First of all, what is the name of the sign that you guys can see in this case? There is a peculiar sign that you see in this case. There is a rash, correct? What is the name of the rash? Yes, all of you all are right. The answer is atopic dermatitis. So you are seeing perioral pallor. Can you see over here perioral pallor? What is the name of that sign? A perioral pallor. Very good, Afsha. So that is called as headlight sign. The next sign is the lateral half of the eyebrows are showing thinning. What is the name of that sign? Lateral half of eyebrows are thin showing thinning. What is the name of that sign? headlight sign is perioral pallor seen in atopic dermatitis very good nimish 
सो द लैटरल हाफ का थिनिंग ऑफ द आईब्रोज इज कॉल्ड एज हर टू गे साइन ओके दैट इज नथिंग बट मैडरोसिस मैडरोसिस मीन्स थिनिंग ऑफ आईब्रोज सो यू कैन सी ओवर योर वॉट यू कैन सी इज हर टू गे साइन और राइट और सो एंड देर इज वन मोर थिंग दैट यू सी इन एटोपिक डोमेटाइटिस नाउ बिलो द आई यू विल बी एबल टू सी मल्टीपल फोल्ड्स कैन यू टेल मी वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ दैट साइन बिलो द आई वेन यू कैन सी मल्टीपल फोल्ड्स Yes, very good image. So that is called as Denny Morgan fold. Denny Morgan fold. All right. So these are the things that we see in atopic dermatitis, and I want all of you all to remember these three signs from the baby's photo. So Denny Morgan fold, Hertogay sign, and headlight sign. All of these are seen in atopic dermatitis. Now, how do you? Uh, make sure that this is atopic dermatitis and not photosensitivity so here i added this to the question correct mother is also giving similar history so mother also must be having allergic tendency and as a result of this she has passed it on to the baby photosensitivity can happen in anyone but if there is a familial tendency then the answer goes more towards atopic dermatitis all right okay sulap as a son who has a seizure disorder the pediatrician starts him on anti epileptics and also refers him to a nutritionist what type of diet will help in this case atkins keto general motors or high protein diet Okay, so Yogesh is saying B, Nimesh is saying keto diet, Tarakanta is also saying the same. All right, absolutely correct, guys. So remember, what is keto diet? Keto diet is nothing but high fat, high protein, and low carb diet. Okay, Atkins diet is nothing but a low carb diet. General Motors diet is overall a low calorie diet. and high protein diet is high protein diet all right so this keto diet was actually initially started for children who have seizure disorder and it was seen that it is reducing the occurrence of seizures in them and it is also reducing the requirement of anti epileptics in them but later on they also realized that by this diet the child child is also losing weight so what we say in hindi sone pe suhaga okay so they decided ki chalo weight loss ho raha hai to ye to puri duniya mein use karna chahiye so they started advertising keto diet as a weight loss diet so now even though most of the people don't know the background behind keto diet you should be knowing that it is actually started to solve the problem of seizure disorder all right okay now identify the disease from the basis of these signs can you identify the disease for me okay syphilis is wrong answer yes nishi nishi is also wrong the correct answer is given by selva kumar and manoj rishi okay so all of these signs are telling me about congenital syphilis not just syphilis it is congenital syphilis all right so now tell me what are the features of congenital syphilis so the first thing that you see over here yes so the notched upper incisors that you can see is nothing but hutchinson teeth notched upper incisors is hutchinson teeth okay now what do you see over here in the nose of the child what is this appearance of the nose called yes very good so the nose is called as saddle nose betha hua nose daba hua nose okay so that is called as saddle nose the nasal bridge is depressed then you are getting some amount of thing coming out of the patient's nose correct so there is nasal secretions so that is called as snuffles and at the angle of the mouth you are getting a ulcer so that is called as regards all right and what is this called the tibia is showing anterior bowing of the tibia what is that sign called what do you call the tibia in this case 
yes very good manoj it is called as saber tibia all right okay so all of these signs are seen in case of congenital syphilis okay next one what size lma would you insert in a neonate and also i want you guys to identify this lma for me identify the type of lma and tell me what size lma would you put in a neonate 0.5 1 1.5 or 2 Okay, so can anyone identify the type of LMA for me? Yes, your answer is correct. When we are talking about neonate, neonate means the child will usually be less than 5 kg, correct? So in less than 5 kg, we use the smallest size of the LMA and that is size 1. Absolutely right. But can you identify the type of LMA for me? Remember size 1.5 is for 5 to 10 kg and size 2 is for 10 to 20 kg. So, you have a silicon LMA and it has a single tube coming out of it. So, what LMA is this? Excellent. So, this is my LMA classic. How do I know that this is LMA classic? Because I have a single tube coming out of it. So, when I have a single tube coming out of it, this is nothing but a first generation LMA. Okay. And in a first generation LMA, what do I have to do? In a first generation LMA, I know there is no gastric tube. The only tube that is present is airway tube. And the only first generation LMA that we know about is LMA classic. Okay. All right. So, this is a table which gives you the LMA sizes and the weights of the children. Next question. A first year anesthesia resident intubates a patient posted for lap hernia surgery. She confirms tube placement by ETCO2. After two minutes, the consultant notices the following ETCO2. What should be done in this case? Suction the endotracheal tube. Continue the surgery, reintubate and reposition the endotracheal tube, do a fiber optic bronchoscopy through the endotracheal tube to detect the problem. Alright, so Manoj is saying that we should reintubate and reposition. Selva, GK, all of them are saying the same. Yes, absolutely correct guys. So, the intubation that is done over here, the capnograph that you can see is nothing but a esophageal intubation. Okay. So, in an esophageal intubation, how does the capnograph look? Initially, you get a normal capnograph and then you will see that the capnograph dips down. Okay. And suddenly it will become zero. Now, why are you getting this type of capnograph? So, remember, this is your trachea. And this is your esophagus. Okay. Now, whenever I put the tube in the trachea, so I should get a continuous capnograph. Okay. So I should get a square shape, nice capnograph waveform. But when I put the tube in the esophagus, what happens? Ideally, there is no CO2 in the esophagus and in the stomach. But when I'm ventilating the patient before intubation, when I'm mask ventilating, I push some amount of air into his stomach. Now, the stomach has some amount of carbon dioxide in it. So, if you put the tube in the esophagus by mistake, initially that carbon dioxide which was there in the stomach, which was stored in the stomach will come out. Then the rest of it will come out and the remaining part of it will come out and then you will have a flat line. Okay. So, that is why you get this constantly falling ETCO2 and this is called as the ETCO2 of esophageal intubation. So, another way that you could have identified is they are saying that's a the very junior resident and she is trying to intubate the patient. Okay. So, obviously, little bit junior ko barabar se nahi aata hoga intubation karna. That's why she must have put it in the esophagus. All right. So, what will you do? You will re-intubate and reposition the endotracheal tube. Okay. A patient is undergoing craniotomy in sitting position. There is sudden drop in his ETCO2, sudden hypotension, desaturation. What is the gold standard to diagnose the condition? 
कैपनोग्राफी डॉपलर अल्ट्रासाउंड ट्रांसिसोफेजल एकोकार्डियोग्राफी और सी वी पी मॉनिटरिंग All right. So, as I can see from you guys, most of you all are mentioning that the answer is transesophageal echo. That is the correct answer. But can you tell me what is the diagnosis in this case? There is sitting position. There is drop in ETCO2. Along with that, there is hypotension and there is desaturation. So, what has happened over here? Yes, very good, Manoj. So, Manoj, the entire diagnosis is venous air embolism. Not just air embolism, but venous air embolism. Okay, so what happens in case of venous air embolism? Whenever you have someone in the sitting position, okay, just imagine this person is on the OT table in the sitting position. Now, at your heart level, if your blood pressure is say 120 by 80, at the brain level, your pressure because of gravity will be little less. So, it will be 100 by 60. So, when there is bleeding during the surgery, if the pressure goes down to 100 by 60 here, the pressure here can go down to 80 by 40 at the cerebral level. And all these veins are open in the head. Okay. So, because of that, what happens? The air enters from outside into the brain. From the brain, it goes to the down to the neck veins from the neck veins it goes down to the heart okay so now in your heart especially on the right side where you are getting all the venous return the right side where you are getting all the venous return there is a air and this is called as venous air embolism venous air embolism okay so because of this air in the right ventricle the blood is not able to pass from the right side of the heart ahead to the pulmonary artery so the pulmonary artery gets no blood if it gets no blood the lungs get no blood if the lungs get no blood then there is no oxygen that is taken from there so as a result of this what are you having you are having desaturation hypotension and drop in et co2 all right so that is the classical presentation of venous air embolism how do you correct it? Some, how do you diagnose it? The best way to diagnose it is by transesophageal echocardiography. The best way to treat it is to put the patient in this position, which is called as Duran's position. Duran's position. Okay. In Duran's position, the patient will be lateral and the right side will be up. So all the air gets collected here in the right atrium. And what you do is you put a central line over here. You put a central line and you aspirate this air out. Okay. So you will be able to manage the patient by giving him the Durand's position and aspirating the air out using a central line. All right. So that is about venous air embolism. Okay. Next question. J is faced with an unanticipated difficult airway in the operation theater. He has tried to intubate the patient four times including an attempt by the senior, but he is unable to do so. What should his next step be? Re-attempt intubation till successful, call ENT surgeon for tracheostomy, do an emergency cricothyrotomy, attempt insertion of a supraglottic airway device. Okay, you all should know this, this is as per the difficult airway guidelines. Okay, so can you guys tell me the difficult airway guidelines?
all right so the correct answer over here is attempt insertion of a supraglottic airway device so the first thing that you do as per difficult airway guidelines is try to intubate the patient how many attempts at intubation can we take what is the maximum number of attempts of intubation that we can take as per difficult airway guidelines and when should i move to the next step okay so the maximum number of intubation attempts is 4 and i will write it as 3 plus 1 why because that plus 1 is by the expert the last attempt should be by the expert so already attempt by senior is done and four attempts of intubation are done what is the next step next step should be insertion of lma or supraglottic airway device okay how many attempts at this also for this there are three attempts that are allowed if that is also not possible the next thing i will do is just bag and mask ventilation till the patient wakes up okay at least maintain his oxygenation so bag and mask ventilation till the patient wakes up and if bag and mask ventilation is also not possible then the last thing that i can do is front of neck access that is called as fona so in fona i have two options one is i can do a tracheostomy in the patient okay and the second thing i can do is a cricothyroidotomy that is one of the emergency things to be done tracheostomy is not that easy to do and you need skill you need an expert to do it especially in an emergency setting like an ent surgeon or surgeon this cricothyroidotomy can be done by all so you just take a 14 gauge iv cannula orange iv cannula and you feel for the most prominent part in your neck which is your thyroid cartilage below that you feel a dip below that you feel a cricoid cartilage that is your ring shaped cartilage so in between your thyroid and cricoid cartilage just take the uh, 14 gauge iv cannula and stick it inside like this okay so you will reach into the cricothyroid membrane and you will pierce the membrane and you will enter into the trachea okay so you can then remove this inside part of the iv cannula and the cannula stays so you can give oxygen through that cannula to the patient so that is one of the emergency things to do if you don't cannot ventilate your patient patient is desaturating and you don't know how to do a tracheostomy that is called as cricothyroidotomy okay you don't need scalpel for it you just need a 14 gauge iv cannula if you don't have a 14 gauge iv cannula use a 16 gauge iv cannula whichever is the most thick broad iv cannula all right so these are the difficult airway guidelines for management of unanticipated difficult intubation this is exactly what i already told you okay so moving on to our next question a patient is to be operated for total hip replacement under combined spinal epidural technique 3 hours into the surgery after epidural top up he starts getting perioral numbness facial twitches bradycardia and a seizure what drug should the anesthetist administer in this situation Propofol 10% intralipid, 20% intralipid, or dantrolene sodium. Okay, so Rishi is saying twenty percent intralipid. Anyone else? Staphylococcus is saying ten percent intralipid. Staphylococcus late for class. Okay, so can anyone tell me what is the diagnosis in this case? You are doing a total hip replacement in combined spinal and epidural technique. Okay. so you have already given the spinal anesthesia to the patient now to maintain the anesthesia throughout the surgery you are giving local anesthetic through the epidural pump so 3 hours into the surgery after giving epidural top up you are getting so look at the timing after giving epidural top up you are getting all these things so you are getting perioral numbness stitches bradycardia seizure so what should be given in this case yes so all these are features of local anesthetic systemic toxicity so previously i told you while giving the brachial plexus block you were getting blast okay because of accidental intravascular injection of the drug here you have overdosed the patient you have not correctly calculated the calculated the dose and you have given it in overdose so after giving epidural top ups again and again 
your patient is having overdose and local anesthetic toxicity and this local anesthetic toxicity is presenting just like the previous one with numbness twitches bradycardia and seizure so the treatment will be the same as the previous one you will give 20 percent intralipid to save this patient all right okay next question an 80 year old male posted for trans thoracic esophagectomy develops sudden hypotension intraoperatively along with these ecg changes what should be the next step deepen the plane of anesthesia iv metoprolol iv amiodarone or cardioversion Guys, remember we also have a class at 8 p.m. on YouTube today where we will be doing all X-ray based quiz. Okay. Alright. So Manoj is saying cardio version. Manoj, can you tell us what is the situation that has arisen in this patient? Staphylococcus is saying the same. Tell me what is your rationale behind thinking of this? What is the ECG? What can you see in this patient? What exactly is happening? Two is to one block. No, it is not two is to one block. How can you read this ECG for me, anyone? All right. So I'll tell you over here. First of all, look at the heart rate. The heart rate is irregular. The RR interval is changing, and I am not able to see any P waves over here. So this is nothing but atrial fibrillation. Okay, it is atrial fibrillation. I am not able to see any of the P waves over here. Okay, can anyone tell me the rate in this case, in this irregularly irregular rhythm? Can anyone calculate the rate and tell me? What is the rate? Okay, so I'll teach you how to calculate the rate in an irregular rhythm. So first calculate 15 boxes and mark it over here. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So these are 15 big squares. So I'll mark from 1 to 15 big squares. Now once I have done this, I have to count the number of QRS complexes that are present over here. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Okay, so there are 8 QRS complexes that are present in these 15 big squares. Now I have to multiply this number 8 by 20. So my heart rate is 160 beats per minute. Okay, so that is how you calculate the heart rate in case of an irregular rhythm. Now I have diagnosed that this patient has atrial fibrillation. Now if he has atrial fibrillation, how do I take care of him? So I need to, first of all, the cause of atrial fibrillation over here is very obvious. You're doing a trans thoracic esophagectomy. You're handling the esophagus through a thoracic incision. So your esophagus is close to your heart. So your retractor or your surgeon's hand, something must have irritated the heart. You know, kuch so. So that is why suddenly the heart is contracting and you're getting atrial fibrillation. But what are you supposed to see? You are supposed to check the BP of this patient. You are supposed to check the blood pressure of this patient. Is your blood pressure normal or is your blood pressure affected? Is it decreased? Okay. If your blood pressure is normal, you can go for A, B, C, D drugs. Amiodarone, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, digoxin. If your heart rate is affected, if you are having hypotension, you have to do something immediately otherwise this patient can go into cardiac arrest okay so to convert this atrial fibrillation back to sinus rhythm in case of hypotension i will cardioward this patient okay so cardioversion will be my answer over here if this patient was stable hemodynamically i would have gone for drug infusion or uh, drug related treatment but since this patient's heart rate is affected over here i will go for cardioversion Anyone can you tell me how much is the shock I will give in cardio version? How many joules of energy of shock will I give in cardio version? Cardio version is for supraventricular arrhythmias, 
इट इज सिंक्रोनाइज विद द क्यू आर एस कॉम्प्लेक्स है ना हमने सी पी आर वाले क्लास में किया है कार्डियो वर्जन वॉट इज द एनर्जी दैट वी गिव यस यू कैन गिव एनी वेयर बिटवीन हंड्रेड टू टू हंड्रेड जूल्स डिपेंडिंग ऑन हाउ द पेशेंट रिवर्ट्स और राइट एंड रिमेंबर द शॉक दैट इज गिवन इन कार्डियो वर्जन इज सिंक्रोनाइज विद द क्यू आर एस कॉम्प्लेक्स और राइट ओके मूविंग ऑन टू आर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ मैन केम विद कंप्लेट ऑफ हेयर लॉस सिंस लॉकडाउन हैज स्टार्टेड He has been under a lot of stress as his wife has been making him do a lot of housework. What other disease should he be checked for? Nothing as it is telogen effluvium, leprosy, pemphigus and lichen planus. Okay, so what is this pattern of hair loss that you guys can see in this case? What is this pattern of hair loss called? Yes, so this pattern of hair loss that we can see, this exclamation mark sign, and patchy hair loss that we can see is nothing but alopecia areata. Okay, this is alopecia areata. Yes, it is also called as moth-eaten alopecia. So this alopecia areata is specifically seen in conjunction with lichen planus. So that is our answer. It is lichen planus. Why is lichen planus happening in this patient? Because he is under stress, physical as well as mental stress. So any kind of autoimmune condition that that is there will get exacerbated by this uh, stress. All right. Now one more thing I wanted to ask you guys: What is the nail condition that is associated? so if i say alopecia areata is associated with a nail condition then tell me what is the nail condition associated with alopecia areata we recently just did it a few slides ago yes absolutely correct no not pitting the nail condition that is associated with it is pterygium correct because in lichen planus we get pterygium in lichen planus we get alopecia areata so the nail condition that is associated with it is pterygium all right okay then a total hip replacement case i have given you the duration of the case 3 hours surgery is preferred to be done under what type of anesthesia a b c or d okay so manoj is saying answer is b and b option is nothing but combined spinal and epidural all right what is a c and d then manoj can you tell us what is a c and d forms of anesthesia good a is only epidural anesthesia C is spinal anesthesia very good only spinal anesthesia and D is D is general anesthesia okay so remember in any lower limb case in any lower limb case which is going to go on for more than 2 hours we will give combined spinal epidural technique first we will give the spinal anesthesia then in that case the spinal action will act law last for 2 hours and then to maintain the anesthesia we will give top ups through the epidural catheter this is your epidural catheter which we place in the epidural space and we give local anesthetic top ups to maintain the anesthesia okay so any lower limb surgery lasting more than 2 hours we will go for csc lscs remember to be done under spinal anesthesia any surgery of the upper limb thorax or head and neck area ga okay all right 
Akshay has a fall on outstretched hand while playing kho kho with his friends. The deformity shown in the picture is most commonly seen due to which condition? Fracture of the radius, fracture of the ulna, fracture of the radius and ulna or fracture of the humerus. Staphylococcus turp can be done under spinal anesthesia. It is a uh, transurethral resection of prostate about takes 45 minutes to one and a half hour. So it's less than two hours. It can be done under spinal anesthesia. Anything below the umbilicus can be done under spinal or spinal plus epidural anesthesia. Okay, depending on the time. Time taken more than two hours, spinal plus epidural. Time taken less than two hours, just plain spinal. Okay, Staphylococcus is saying fracture of the humerus causes this. Any other answers? Manoj is also showing fracture of humerus. Any other answers do we have over here? Okay, Narmata Devi is saying fracture radius and ulna. Can you tell me what is this deformity that you see over here? Please don't say wrist drop. It is a combination of all of these things that I've put over here. It is a combination of elbow flexion, forearm pronation, wrist flexion. Thumb adduction, interphalangeal ex, uh, flexion, and metacarpophalangeal extension. All four of them form Volkmann's deformity. Absolutely correct. This is called as Volkmann's contracture or Volkmann's deformity. And Volkmann's deformity is a long term complication of which fracture of the upper limb? It is a long term complication of supracondylar fracture of the humerus. Okay. And this fracture, how does it happen? It happens mainly in children by fall on outstretched hand. Correct? Okay. Now tell me, Fouche in a 60-year-old menopausal female can cause what fracture? Fouche in a 60-year-old menopausal female can cause what fracture? Supracondylar. Fouche in a pediatric age group causes supracondylar fracture correct Fouche in a 60 year old female causes very good manoj so it mostly causes coli's fracture or it can even cause smith's fracture correct depending on how the patient has fallen all right now can you tell me what is the most commonly injured nerve in case of fracture supracondylar humerus if you have to tell me the most commonly injured nerve in supracondylar fracture humerus. What is the name of that now? Anyone? That is one of the Andarka questions that is asked in the exam. Yes, very good Afsha. So in fracture supracondylar humerus, the most commonly injured nerve is the anterior interosseous nerve. Not posterior interosseous, anterior interosseous nerve. An anterior interosseous nerve is a branch of your median nerve. Barabar? Okay. Alright. Moving on to our next question. A 20 year old woman was admitted due to an overdose of sleeping pills following breakup with her boyfriend. She has had repeated previous admissions for slitting her wrists. The personality disorder she is suffering from is likely to be narcissistic, dependent, borderline or histrionic. Okay, Afsha, Narmatha Devi, both are saying borderline personality. Anyone else? Any other answers? Borderline, borderline, borderline. Okay, correct. This is borderline personality. Now, how do you identify a borderline personality? This is a typical classical clinical picture that they will give. They will say that the patient has suicidal tendencies and very fragile relationships. Okay, so thoda sa bhi kuch hua, toh they will go and try to commit suicide. So that is called as borderline personality. Now, what is narcissistic personality? Narcissistic personality is nothing but I, me, myself. Okay, so I, me, myself. Everything is about me. The world revolves around me. So people who think only about themselves and consider themselves as great, even greater than God, are called as narcissistic people. Alright? 
डिपेंडेंट पर्सनैलिटी डिपेंडेंट पर्सनैलिटी विल बी सम वन हू के नॉट मेक देयर ओन डिसीशंस सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल देर इज अ हाउस वाइफ यू आस्क हर दैट मैडम वॉट कलर सारी डू यू वॉन्ट इवन दैट शी विल से आई वॉन्ट आई लास्ट माई हजबेंड मैडम वॉट टाइप ऑफ वेजिटेबल डू यू वॉन्ट टू बाई टूडे आई विल आस्क माई हजबेंड ओके एवरी थिंग फॉर एवरी स्मॉल डिसीजन इन लाइफ शी इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन द हजबेंड सो दैट इज अ डिपेंडेंट पर्सनैलिटी दे के नॉट मेक डिसीजन ऑफ देयर ओन बॉर्डर लाइन पर्सनैलिटी ऑलवेज द एग्जाम्पल विल बी गिवन ऑफ देम हैविंग अनस्टेबल रिलेशनशिप्स एंड हिस्ट्रियॉनिक पर्सनैलिटी इज नथिंग बट ड्रामेटिक पर्सनैलिटी ओके दे लव टू डू ड्रामा दे लव टू बी सेंटर ऑफ अटेंशन सो एनी थिंग स्मॉल इट विल बिकम अ बिग ड्रामा अराउंड दैम ओके एंड दे विल ट्राई टू हैव अ दे विल ट्राई टू हैव अटेंशन ऑफ एवरी वन ऑन दैम राइट सो दो आर आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ पर्सनैलिटीज ओके Shan is highly influenced by the movie Ye Jawani Hai Diwani. I hope all of you all have seen this movie. He wants to be like the lead actor in the movie. No emotional relationships. He is disinterested in making friends. He is prefers to live his life without interference. I think most of us try to live a life like this nowadays. So most of us are ha- probably having a personality disorder. Okay. What type of personality are we talking about? Narcissistic, antisocial, schizoid, or histrionic? When will the Unacademy quiz sessions resume? Manoj, which quiz sessions are you asking for? There are so many quizzes that are lined up. We have the Educator Curated Test Series in which we are having tests for individual subjects. Uh, then we are having the uh, All India Mock Test on 26th of February. Quizzy quiz bhar ke hai. Okay, so Staphylococcus is saying he is narcissistic personality. Afsha is saying schizoid personality and Narmata is saying antisocial personality. All different answers. Now someone else also needs to give me an answer so that I can have some kind of majority in this question. Oh, acha Manoj, those quizzes. Okay, that will start again in March. Got it. I'll start those again in March, first week of March. Every day at 8 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Answer. Batao. What type of personality are we talking about? So everyone, Narmata, Manoj, Afsha, and uh, Staphylococcus have all given different answers. So one more person, give me the answer so that we can choose the winner. Okay, so the correct answer over here is schizoid personality. Okay, so as Afsha has correctly mentioned, schizoid person is a happy loner. Now, narcissistic personality will only think about himself. Okay, so these people, it's not like they only think about themselves. It is that they don't want to be with anyone. Okay, that's it. It's not like they only think about I, me, myself. They do think about others, but they don't want to have any relationship with others. Okay, and antisocial personality. Anti-social personality is one like what they will give you over here is a person who's alcoholic or a person who's a drug addict. So whoever does things that are not accepted by the society and then he goes or a rapist. Okay, so all those are anti-social personalities. Histrionic personality will try to make a drama everywhere. So that's how they will give it. Schizoid personality, he is happy amongst himself. He is not at all bothered about others and he wants to live a lonely life okay so that is your schizoid personality so that is how you identify now if you want me to give you a difference between narcissistic and schizoid personality okay so so have you guys had friends who will talk in third person like suppose i'll my name is janvi so i'll say aaj janvi ko शाही खाना खाना है या आज जानवी को थकावट हो रही है ओके सो आई रेफर टू माई सेल्फ एज अ थर्ड पर्सन आई थिंक आई एम ग्रेट आई थिंक आई एम बेटर देन गॉड ऑल्सो सो दैट इज नार्सिसिस्टिक पर्सनैलिटी ओके बट शिजोर्ड पर्सनैलिटी इज आई सपोज आई डोंट केयर अबाउट अदर्स एट ऑल आई एम आई एम नॉट रूट टू देम बट आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू बी लेफ्ट अलोन आई विल डू माई वर्क आई विल कम बैक आई विल वॉच माई नेटफ्लिक्स have my dinner and sleep and that will be my life i i won't go for 
uh, I don't like to go much for parties. I don't like to date much. I don't like to have a social life. So that is very different. I don't think great of myself, but I'm happy and content being in myself. Okay. So that is the difference between narcissistic and schizoid personality. Okay. So that is the way you will be able to identify it in the exam. So with that, we conclude today's first session and then your second session at 8 p.m. is basically all the x-rays that can be asked in your exam. So I shall see you guys. I shall just post the link of that session on this telegram group. So make sure you join at 8 p.m. for that session. And if you like the session, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up at the end of it. And here I'll put the link for the class. Let's crack NEED PG. Alright. See you. Bye-bye.